Hello and welcome to another episode of Teaching with Inquiry Live. Tonight we are going to be talking about math and how to use math in your classroom, especially when you're looking at how to differentiate instruction. So if you're like me, you might teach a split grade in your classroom. And if you are teaching a split, then sometimes having a class and having multiple learners in your classroom means that sometimes math can be a little bit difficult. So tonight I'm going to walk you through what I do in my classroom to differentiate instruction and how I meet the variety of learners that are in my classroom using open-ended math pages and differentiated math pages and open-ended tasks. So I'm going to flip my video over here and I apologize for the lights this way you could actually see the paper. So I want to show you this is an example of something I would use in fractions which is actually going to be the next unit I am covering in my classroom. So I'm just going to switch it over here so that you can see both pages. So I give my students no matter what grade they're in I give my students the same page and embedded into this page is an element of differentiation so we'll start here every day I give my students a this is fraction so I'll give them either a number of the day right now I'm in multiplication so we have on division so we have an equation of the day and I post that in my classroom now if I have a variety of students that are working at different levels the number that they choose is going to be a little bit different. For example, in fractions, one of the main things that students are focusing on is they're moving from understand having the concept of one half and they're moving into more fractions and perhaps the complexity of fractions. So you're looking at benchmark fractions of one half, one quarter, one eighth, one fifth, one third. So looking at that as developmental, you've got to start where your students are and that's going to be at the halfway point. So I always start my unit on fractions where the fraction of the day is going to be half. Now, as we go through the unit, they get the exact same page every single day. So they get really used to the different concepts. Now, the way I lay it out is I have different activities and different questions. So I'll move the paper around here so that you can see the different questions that are on the page. But these questions align with the basic expectations that students need to cover in the junior grades, which is what I'm teaching. So grade four and grade five, I can cover all of the expectations just the basic knowledge and understanding with this very first page and again the complexity changes depending on what fraction I choose so for some of my students they're going to continually every day work with one half for some of my students that are working maybe if they're working below grade level they're going to work less they're going to stay at one half for a lot longer the students as they become more comfortable I'm going to increase the complexity of those fractions and with my students that still need to stay on the one half, I will have one of those conversations with them and say, I want you to not do that fraction of the day, but I want you to focus on the one half. So you're differentiating your instruction because you're changing what fraction they're working on. And depending on what they're doing, what equation or fraction or number of the day that you choose, will increase or decrease the complexity. So for example, we did some division today in my classroom. So with that, I have some students that are struggling with division and I have some students who are killing it with division. So although it's three digit by one digit a division, for those students that were able to, I can increase the complexity by giving them a bigger number to see if their strategies they're using for two digit and three digit division, if those apply to larger numbers. So they all got bigger numbers. My students that were super comfortable with division at grade level, they got a three digit by one digit division. And those students that were struggling, we backed it off a little bit and did a two digit division question. So for example, with fractions, if we decided that we wanted to do one fourth, so I'm just going to work through this with one fourth. So for all of, no matter what fractions they have to do, they would have to write it in words because one of the expectations is that they understand standard fractional notation as well as how to read and say fractions. So they should understand how to write one half, one third, one fourth. It doesn't matter what this fraction of the day is, this would apply to any fraction. 
So they would write one fourth. Very simple. And that would change no matter who you had. Now, if you have, we also want to have students understand the concept of fractions so they would line it up on a number line. Now, again, this is the same activity and the complexity will change depending on what fraction you give that student. So it's automatically differentiated. So you might have some students doing one half or you might have some students doing one fourth. And for those that are a bit more advanced, you could give them something that might be a little bit more complicated with say a smaller uh, denominator. So you could do one sixteenth and see if they could find that because lining it up on the number line might be a bit more difficult. So for one fourth, they would simply say, okay, if I know that that's half, I know one fourth is in the between. So they would just mark it on there and fill out one fourth. And they're doing the same page every single day. So they're going to get very used to these activities. And at the beginning, they're probably going to struggle with some of the questions, but as they do that repeated practice, they get better and better and they feel more confident and they're less intimidated by the questions on the page and they can really focus on the concept and number that they're looking at. So another, ex another expectation that my students need to cover with fractions is looking at how much more they would need to add to get to a whole. So the opposite fraction to make one fourth into one whole would simply be three fourths. And again, they're finding equivalent fractions. This is always one that they initially struggle with, but once they start learning, they get much better at this. So at the beginning, when they first get a page like this, they would really struggle. And that's how it's really set up that the first time they ever see one of these differentiated math pages, they don't really know what to do and they are going to struggle and that's totally okay and expected. And it really helps develop that growth mindset and a sense of perseverance and that self-reflective as they do, you know, the fifth sheet that they have, the fifth time they do this sheet, all of a sudden they find it to be a lot easier and they start gaining more confidence, especially important in fractions and even division for that matter, because students are often really intense intimidated by those concepts. So having something that is familiar and ready for them helps. And this is really easy for me because I do one thing, I make one page and it's accessible for all of my students. Now this really helps for my students that have special education needs because they go to the same bin and grab the same paper as everybody else in the classroom. Whether they are working above, at, or below grade level standards, they are all working on the same page. They can change up the fraction and I will often ask students to pick a fraction between that's more than one half or pick a fraction that's less than one half. I might give a range that they themselves can choose their own fraction. That just differentiates this activity even more because it's bringing in student voice and choice and students have this knack sometimes of differentiating themselves. So they're not going to give themselves often a number that's going to be too challenging. Now you do have to watch for those students like some of my students today that did a division question with some choice where they did the division question divided by one. You've got to watch for those students, but with a little feedback and coaching, you can get them to choose more appropriate ones that are at their level. So again, students work through this page and it's different for each one. You can build in student choice. It's easy for me because I'm planning one activity and I can cover up to three to four grade levels. If I've got say a grade two student, I can give them manipulatives and they can work on some of this. I can even take some of these out. So for a grade two expectation, they wouldn't need to do equivalent fractions. So I would just have a conversation with that student and say, okay, I want you to focus on just these certain questions and you can skip that one. And they really like that idea that it's the same page, but they don't have to do all of it. So you can differentiate that way too. If you've got someone who's really low versus really high. My favorite one on these fraction pages, I'm going to swing it up here is this batting order one that I've done. Now, this is often really difficult for students when they start, but it totally integrates student choice and allows them to choose the different fractions that they can create and put them in an order that they're comfortable with. And occasionally I will change up the numbers that are in this box as they do it. I think I 
often do that every week. These numbers will change up so that they're not making the same fractions. But I want them to start looking at the fractions, how they can make similar fractions out of these same numbers, and then how they would order it. So if they are really good at, you know, one half and one fourth, they could do one half and then they would write one fourth and they can just cross them off here. They could do five tenths and three eighths. And now that three eighths might be a bit tricky for some of them, but if they're operating that they would, and they're putting them in order, they could simply look that you've got, okay, we've got one fourth and then three eighths. Well, I know four eighths is the same as one half, so three eighths is going to be smaller. And then we'll just do one half and five tenths that are equal. So they could order those together and that would be a great way for students to change that up and do something different each day. Now, that's just the knowledge and understanding piece. This basically goes through the basic knowledge pieces that students are supposed to work through according to the curriculum. So I've kind of taken and looked at the expectations and I've worked in one question that fits with each of the components of the knowledge and understanding and try to open it up so that it's really accessible and the activity can change in complexity all dependent on what that fraction of the day is. Now on the back of the page, I like to use a bit of inquiry where you have an open-ended task so they've got multiple entry points, same as the front, but there's not always necessarily a right answer or sometimes there's a bit more flexibility. Now this is definitely doesn't happen every single time because it's math and sometimes you can't always have open-ended questions and you just need to do some practice. But when I can, I try to make open-ended problems. So for this, for this question, they're making a flag. They get to design their own flag and I just simply give them some parameters and then they have to look at that flag and really look at it from a fractional perspective. So I will sometimes show them different flags as kind of a getting started so they can see what different flags look like and how we can talk about flags in fractions. And then they make up their own. And because you know I love student voice and choice, this is one of those great activities where you can bring in a little bit of inquiry, a little bit of differentiation, and bring it in so that students can kind of create something of their own. They have a bit more ownership and say in what they're doing, and they can also make something that is theirs, and it's going to be a little bit different for everybody. If you're looking at simplifying this, you can, again, negotiate with certain students and say, okay, I know it says 12 to 24, but I simply, I'll just walk over to their desk once they grab their paper, and I just walk up and kind of go, okay, I want you to do six to 12 boxes and I'll just change it for them. But again, they're getting the exact same question as somebody else. What's going to look on their page during a show and share is going to look pretty similar to somebody else, but I've simplified that activity by simply just changing the numbers because now they can make a rectangular flag with three or four colors and I might even say with two or three colors, I might just change that up for them too. And I can simply just, that's a matter of a couple of seconds walking over to that student's desk and just saying, okay, how can I change that on the fly for that student? And sometimes I'll even find that because they're gaining some confidence, because they have tried this side of the page and they're feeling successful, that sometimes they're ready to do these color tiles and use those manipulatives and try to push and go beyond maybe what I had initially thought. So it does give me some flexibility that way and helps me not to necessarily pigeonhole somebody if there might be an activity that they can go a bit beyond what I had initially thought or according to what their IEP says. So it gives them that flexibility to push and extend and it also gives your students that safety and knowing that they're not sticking out like a sore thumb because they're doing something totally different or that you know you hand them the grade two textbook when they're really in grade five that sometimes will cause those students to shut down initially and just say I'm not good at math and not try I mean I still definitely have those students that every year just really have a hang up on math 
but I do find that this does build a lot of confidence for my students and gives them an opportunity to feel successful and doesn't make them feel like they stick out. And it makes it so much easier for me. This is all I do in a 50 minute period is we do the front page when they come in and then we move on and have a little bit of a conversation about the concept. So like I said, with this one in particular, I might show them some flags. We might talk about it, have a little number talk about how those flags and fractions are related. And then I'll give them this activity, they work on it, and then we join back up together and share our work or do a gallery walk or all of those other strategies that I'm sure all of you are using in your classroom already. So this for me is a way that I can easily hit my targets in math, cover my expectations, and do a lot less work for me, especially the prep and planning, because I'm not necessarily covering all of the expectations. I'm not planning six different lessons. I plan one and look at multiple ways my students can access it, which as a combined split grade teacher saves me a ton of time because I have three kids at home and don't have a ton of time to be spending planning multiple grade levels every single day and different lessons and splitting that up. I already have enough to do with science and social studies for that to cover those two expectations. So when you can, combine, 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 and open-ended tasks where you increase your student voice and choice are definitely a way to do this. So I suggest, I would recommend giving it a try and seeing what you can come up with. If you're interested in grabbing these pages, if you throw a get me or I want those, let's do I want those, I want those. If you throw an I want those comment into the comments of this live video, I will send you a free sample of some of the pages that kind of come out of the different activities. So I'll send you the fraction page that you see here with the flags activity, as well as division, multiplication, and a few other number sense pages that you're gonna grab for free just for watching this video. And if you wanna get the whole unit for the entire grades that covers all of my differentiated math pages, then you can get these and save yourself even more time because you don't have to make them. They're already done for you. I have a growing math bundle on my TPT store. The multiplication, the division will be released within the next week or so so that you'll have all of those. And then we just got two more units that'll come in by before the end of June. So you can check that out in my TPT store, which is head on over to Teachers Pay Teachers and search for my store, Madly Learning, and I'll drop a link in the comment section as well. Thanks very much for checking out this video. I'd love if you shared it with others that you think might enjoy this. And this will also be available as a podcast replay, Teaching with Inquiry Live, and the blog post will also be up on www.madlylearning.com. On And I hope you enjoy the free sample that you're going to get when you put the comment, give me those, into the comment section tonight. And I will make sure you get that once I've done going live. Have a great week. I hope you have a restful week and save yourself some time planning. See you next week. Talk to you later.